Hello and welcome to brainstorming some abstracty goodness because I like to design abstracts and so sometimes I'll just start brainstorming some random ideas and see what, what we come up with. It could be based on what I'm watching on YouTube, it could be based on a book, it could be based on anything. So let's see what we've got. Normally, I guess I should say if you're watching the Let's Build a Game from Scratch series, I don't, I try not to do any work outside of actually videotaping. For the brainstorming of abstracty goodness, I did take some some notes previously, and I, I put them down here. So I'm just going to kind of start with these seven and explain a little bit on each, and maybe some other ideas will come to mind. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But here we go. So the first one is uh, clock with the moving bot in the middle removing cards. And the idea is... I was thinking of one of our education games with the clock, and the idea is that uh, in the middle, uh, there's going to be a um, um, uh, like a, a bot or something. That was so descriptive. Yes, a bot or something. And basically, the idea is that players are going to be playing cards on the outside, or trying to gather cards on the outside, and the bot's going to be shooting them away. Maybe not cards. What could they be? If you're a bot and you don't want people to... Is the bot evil? I don't know. Is the bot evil? Is this a co-op? I haven't done a co-op abstract before. That might be interesting. Huh. Huh. Is this a co-op? What? I don't know. I don't feel I don't feel strongly about that one, so we're just going to do the second one. As things get bigger, it moves slower. Okay. I've been playing a lot of Slithero, Slither.io recently, and I'm having a lot of fun with the game. And if you haven't played, basically you are a worm or a snake and you are moving around a board collecting food and as you get more food, you grow larger. The thing is, as you grow larger, you move slower, and that means that the little guys can take you out of the game easier because they can move faster than you. So the basic concept of as you get bigger, you move slower appealed to me. So I thought, well, why not try making it into a little abstracty game? So what are we going to do? I have no idea. What's something... I mean, you could follow the exact same format, just players are collecting food, collecting cubes. It's a lot of cubes. Collecting cubes. Players are going to have to be moving at the same time. Will they have to move at the same time? So ultra small turns. Or quick quick actions, I guess you could call them. Hmm. could also do something that grows over time. Oh, how about this? Well, this is this is a bit themey, but uh, okay, so what I was thinking was um, gas miners of a gas giant planet and as you collect more and more you move slower, but this is space, and there's no such thing as moving slower in space. Well, there is, but it, the the connection isn't that strong. I don't know. Okay, well, let's move on to the third one. Let's see where it gets us. Timeline game where players add cards face down to an order of operations. Cards will be removed. I don't know what that means. I don't know what I was talking about when I wrote it down. Some cards will... Some cards will need... X number of green cards to have been played ahead of it in order to activate. Okay, so this this starts with uh, starts with the basic line of cards. Those cards are face down, and those cards are think of it as I don't know a, a direction that a civilization is taking. I mean, 
the possibilities are endless. This is a not, yeah, this automatically is not an abstracty game. It's more more like an abstracty concept that lends itself well to a theme. So basically, stuff is going to happen in a certain order. Okay, as as cards are revealed, they have prerequisites. Quizits. What do you think? Oh <gasps> no, there's no way I spelled that right. Maybe. All right, as cards are revealed, they have prereqs. If if they are met, the card stays. Um, players will be able to travel back in time if conditions are met, if whatever those conditions are, and they can play other cards. Oh, maybe maybe players know that the card they want to have active in the future is not going to activate. So they go back in time to to give it the required stuff. Very technical around here. There's a lot to think about in that in that little idea. We're gonna we're gonna keep moving on. Inner and outer circle. Cards are face up and face down. They move separate of each other, and there are cards that will flip all cards. Players are trying to collect stuff. Maybe the circles are squares to make the lining up easier. I bet that makes absolutely zero sense. So think of it this way. Concentric circles are squares. And the inside square, we'll just call it that. Because the square gives you four points and you can turn the four different sides of a square into a set number of points that cards can travel, travel on. So let's say there's concentric squares and cards are moving either clockwise or anti-clockwise based on which square they're, they're located on. And maybe this could be a co-op too. Players are trying to get to the center and to get to the center you have to collect resources on the outside but as the cards shift and move, your strategies are going to have to change. What is what kind of cards are these? Who knows? How many cards go on each ring? Are players attacking this ring? or collecting for their benefit? Well, I guess they're doing that already, right? Are players attacking this ring or attacking each other? Uh, gather or, oh, ah, or gathering to attack each other? Hmm. Five. Players need to interact with a board that changes from turn to turn. Okay. So, recently we played Orléans, and there's an event that's also the timing mechanism in the game, but depending on the event, you have to do stuff. But it just kind of goes away. I'm thinking more along the lines of permanent change to a board's state. Uh... Uh, I should also add, this is not the legacy model. I mean tokens on the board. Add it to the board. What immediately jumps into my head is some post-apocalyptic Hunger Games type thing where players have to run from one side to the other and if you make it awesome... If you don't, things get added to the board, or I guess it's not conditional to whether or not you make it, or, but the board changes every time. Oh, oh, okay. 
um, a, a long narrow grid of face down cards that players will need to navigate oh the cards uh, oh okay okay the cards can be picked up not with caps lock on though can be picked up um, uh, for points if a player is able to complete the run if a card is moved or removed that space uh, will be replaced with another with another card it's not a bad little not a bad little concept there do I want to put anything more now? No. I think I'm just going to go to the next one. Okay, first person tower defense with increasing size hands of cards approaching the base. Players can move from station to station trying to take out the different units attacking the base. Okay. So think of it this way. We've got... We've got a four-cornered... Four-cornered castle. Each wall and corner has uh, has a small deck of cards associated with it. Players will be able to run around the castle walls looking at and engaging with each of these different decks. Uh, players will be able to array the different enemy units in front of them like a tableau and they can fire slash attack uh, pull in uh, use some sort of heavy uh, or well, let's just use some sort of catapult uh, maybe this uh, this could also be could this well actually more like a question could this be be a castle assault? I don't see why not. It's just not set up that way in my head, so I'm not not going to explore that right now. So I'm on one of the walls, and there are no bad guys in front of me, so I'm going to run to the next keep. And there's a board in front of us, and I can see that there are four cards in that deck, and there's nobody nearby. So I'm going to pick up those four cards, and I'm going to put them in front of me. And I see that I have a bow and arrow. We'll have to play around with the weapons, but let's just go medieval for now. There's, I have a bow and arrow, and I think, okay, there's two guys that I can attack and kill easily because they're lightly armored. I attack them, and then I run over to the other side, and help out one of my buddies. So this is definitely a co-op. Did I say co-op in the initial? No, I didn't. This is a co-op for sure. Actually, this game sounds kind of fun. By the way, if you have any name ideas for any of these games, please feel free to leave them in the comments because I'm always down for looking at what other people think are good names. Or if you have any good themes, being that some of these are abstracty goodness. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay. Last line of defense. One side sends missiles at the other. Oh, okay. I I'm glad I read this. In one of the creep spread videos, I was talking about how war doesn't appeal to me on a, on a personal level and on a designer level. And... Abstract war doesn't bother me, but war simulation does. I think that's where I can pretty much draw the line. Or at least that's how I can better explain how I feel about the subject. So, anyway, enough on that. Back to games. Maybe there's a big fog of war or a radar that players can get a heads up when a missile is inbound. Maybe there are tokens that are face down on a generic track. Tokens may or may not be actual missiles. 
may not be actually missiles because grammar and spelling. Uh, but the sides always know when a missile is inbound. They just don't know where exactly. Okay. Okay. So this is a, a well, it's kind of teamy, but it's teamy, but you can play with odd players. Play with odd number of players. Okay. Uh, players will guard a wall. Uh, on their side. Is it a wall? I, I know where I'm getting this from. I'm getting it from, I think it's called Missile Wars in Minecraft. I used to watch that a lot, but it doesn't have to be a wall. Players will guard a thing and they will shoot missiles at each other. This might be fun if a player is killed, they auto respawn in a central location. Okay. What else? What else? What else? So, okay. I'm on a side and I decide I, I play a certain number of cards. I, I play cards that are going to fire a missile or I have the option to fire a missile there's going to be a track, so there'll be a board where missiles are moving across, and on the outside there's a track that says, it's very generic, it's just one through ten, or however many spaces separate, and every turn that somebody takes, these various missiles that players play will move along the track, so every turn, or every action, missiles will move along the track missiles move along the track uh, missiles will move in a face down manner until the other side can see the missile um, vision is based on Standard vision or equipment. Think radar. Radar O'Reilly. Which is a great show, by the way. Okay. So not only can players fire missiles, but they can also build improvements. I think that's... Okay. What else? I'm not going to worry about what they're actually firing at. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, let's see if we can't just come up with a game off the top of our heads. It's something I'm, I'm, I'm reading a book called Red Mars right now, and it's all about terraforming. Well, not all about, but it's part of it is a bunch of colonists have gone to Mars and they're going to terraform it. So terraforming, plan, terraforming planets is something that interests me. A racing game is something that interests me. How about we write this down? Okay, terraforming. Racing game, but none of this is none of this is abstracty, is it? But that's okay. We're just brainstorming, right? Brainstorming it happens to be abstract. That's good. What's something abstracty? I usually do better with this when I have a bunch of bits and bobs in front of me, but uh, I don't have that right now, and I'm not going to take the time to set it up. So I guess we're going to cold turkey this this guy for another five minutes and see if we can struggle our way through the. Area control, maybe? Something like... Oh, okay. So how about a 
two by two grid, two by two grid of cards. Players will put cubes on said cards. Why? So they can expand, so they can expand to the next card. Cards will have numbers and colors. The cards need to have something. Cards need to have something more interesting as well. I just don't know what it is yet. Cards need to have something more interesting as well. Got it. N noted. Okay, so... Huh. There are four color. Okay, so there are four colors. Four colors in the game. Players are trying to. Oh, oh, okay. Players are trying to create. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm going to say this. Out so there are. There are point cards that have patterns on them, and players are putting cubes. Players are given a goal. Okay, so players have a pattern of these four colors that they need to get, and that's the way they win the game or win the round. I have no idea how quickly this game is going to play, but let's just say that it's short. So they have one card, and the idea is you want to make that pattern. Players are going to be placing cubes on the 2x2 two two grid in order to win a grid spot. If you win a grid spot you get to place a tile down on the board. Players will be dealt tiles, and then there will be a random, there will be a, a deck of tiles. And as players win, they can basically, you're building this color map. I feel like this game has been, does, been done before. I'm sure it is. Somebody's probably yelling at the video right now, but that's okay. Okay. Four colors in the game. Players are trying to build the pattern to match the card they have been dealt. Players are placing cubes on the board in order to win the right to place an expansion tile on the color array. The goal is to match what they have. They win the round slash game. Have a nice day. Okay. I think that's good. I think this is a I mean, let's be honest. I have a list of other projects to work on, and I'm not going to get to any of these anytime soon. The only one that really jumps out at me is the uh, the tower defense. This one is actually quite exciting. I like the idea of running around and setting up a tableau of enemies and having to deal with them. Uh, I just I feel like the weapons would be limiting because this is just my my constant struggle with combat, how to make combat something it hasn't been before. And the answer could be it doesn't need to be something different. It just needs to it just needs to be like the theme around it needs to be different, which is fine, but for me I I I'd like to think that I can come up with something a little more interesting than that. So, anyway, why are you not Oh, I know why. Okay. Well, that's uh that's that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I guess uh, we'll see you next time.